Hello and welcome to Infinity. In a previous video, I showed the new 3M color dominance model, which separates out the red, green, and blue for uh, whether which one is the highest value, the medium value, or the lowest value. And it appears, and we can show in here, if I alt click these, this is the the dominant color, the maximum color in each of these. This shows that the red is the highest value in parts of the sky, which is interesting and can be useful. Then you've got the middle one, and green is often common as the middle color in skies because it's cyan, but blue is more dominant, and there's a lot of red in the ground. And for the minimum one, the recessive one, then blue is the least common in the ground. And you can use this as well for selecting. You just go to the one which selects best. Some colors, some pictures will be better than others for this. So this one here, selecting the sky, isn't quite as easy. But some pictures, you'll find that works really well. OK. So let's look at the technology of it. So you've got, for each pixel, you've got red, green, and blue. There's a maximum value, a minimum value, and a middle value. And that's so the max min and mid is the 3m of the 3m model the problem is we need to figure out which of red green and blue is the maximum or the minimum because we can find out which of the market which of the maximum value is but we can't find out whether it's red green or blue because affinity will tell us which the maximum value similarly affinity will tell us what the minimum value is and we have to kind of deduce which the middle one is because it's not the maximum and it's not the minimum, which is kind of a bit of a trick. So I have to start doing calculations. And one calculation we do is we look at this here, which is the gap between any pixel uh, here, any value here. And this here, we're just taking blue as an example, but we're going to apply it to the red and the green in the each layer as well. Because what we need to do in, is in each layer, we, we need to say, if we're saying this is the maximum layer, we only want the maximum color. So in that layer, for this pixel, you'd want red and you would not want green and you would not want blue. So when we look at this value here, we take the value here of pixel and we know the minimum. We take one from the other and all we can say is that when this is zero, we know this here is the right color. So if it was green, you take the value of green and you take it uh, away the minimum value from the three pixels. If that's zero, you know you got green, you're the, the right one here. So this gives us a way of calculating it and sorting one from the other. Similarly, if you look at this side, you take the maximum value here and subtract the value of the pixel here, the channel in the, within the pixel. Then when this is zero, you know you've got the maximum of this. And then also is useful to have the maximum minus the min minimum this distance here, which will tell you uh, in particular when this is zero, that all three of these are of the same value, which effectively means you've got a monochrome picture. Two things we're going to use in here. One is the round down function which says if I round down a number between 0 and 1, only if it's 1 will it stay up at 1. Otherwise, it's always going to go fall down to 0 because rounding down effectively discards the fraction part. Then also we have round up, which works the other way around. And that says if I've got any number here, it's always going to go up to 1. And so it's then it's going to only be 0. I'm going to round up 0. That's going to stay at 0. So round down is a test for whether it's, it's, it's 1, and round up is a test for whether it's 0. So, to find out which of these is the maximum, this formula then is applied to each one of the red, green, and blue colors within the maximum layer, you know, the dominant layer, those first of those three layers. Because what we're taking here is take the original color here, whether it's red, green, or blue, and do this calculation here. Because the maximum minus b, which is this one here, 
And we're saying if this is zero, then we want to keep this. Otherwise, we want to get rid of it. So we want to multiply by zero to get rid of it and multiply by one to keep it. And so when this is zero, then one minus zero is one. So rounding down won't work. You just stay as at one and then you keep it and vice versa. So these are effectively just saying, saying, do I keep this or do I throw it away for this channel in this pixel? The minimum is a similar sort of thing, but the other way around, which is using this here. So this one uses the top one. This one uses the bottom one. We also here need to multiply by another test, which is basically to say, because doing this calculation here, if you've got these are the same, then it's going to trip over and miss this. And you're going to count for that pixel, both in the maximum and in the minimum. But we only want to count for it in the maximum. So we put this one in, which effectively will just be zero when these are, are both equal. In other words, you've got a monochrome. So that will discard monochrome pixels there. And then the mid, you start off, you've got to be, uh, you multiply this by a round down, but also you've got, because effectively here you're saying not the top one and not the bottom one. But then you've also multiplied by the round up here. So this is counting for the for this gap. And this one is counting for the bottom gap. And also you've got to count for that, whether, whether you get the situation of it being monochrome and all the same. So it gets rid of that as well. So there's a, each of these multiply here is going, I want a one for this, but not if it's this and not if it's this. And that gives us the way of doing the 3M model. So what you end up then with is a calculation for the three areas. And then I can take this here, go to filters, apply image. And if I go to equations and put in here, I'll just do a cut and paste. For this one here, for the red, because we're now doing the maximum layer. And we put this in each one of these, but we're going to change it to the green here and green there. And blue there. And blue there. And so we get red, green and blue on each of these. And then you apply the image and you do that to each of three layers. And you're going to see the formula up here for the each of the three layers to put that in. I won't put it in because it'll take quite a long time. And then you hit apply image and you've got those three layers that we had before. There's also going to be another video in which I show you the macros to do this for you. So you don't even have to remember it. You'll just click on it and there'll be some extra things within the macros as well, which I'm going to show in a, yet another video. So there's going to be a few videos here, but it's kind of an interesting model and I hope it's interesting and useful for you. Thank you very much for watching.